end of the session. So now our next speaker is Drew Hudson. She is a PhD student at Stanford, and she led the organization of the GQA Challenge. So we are all looking forward to you to learn more about the GQA Challenge. So hi everybody. Um, in this year's workshop, um, we had several new tracks, and one of them is the GQA challenge. Um, so what I would like to do in this uh, talk is to give you a short overview of the task, uh, present some analysis of the results, and finally announce the winners. So earlier this morning, we saw the BQA dataset. And if we look, for instance, at the following image, um, where we can see a family having breakfast, uh, the questions from the data set tend to look like that. So they can be, for instance, um, what color is the apple, um, what are they doing, is the woman happy, and so forth. And what you may be able to notice is that the questions tend to be quite short and maybe a little bit too simple. Um, there aren't many questions, for instance, about all the relations and interactions between different objects. And the questions are definitely in large, not compositional. So in the sense that they don't require multiple steps of reasoning in order to arrive at the answer. Another main problem of existing BQA data sets that was mentioned earlier today um, is the very strong and dominant question biases that they tend to suffer from. Because you know the world is indeed very biased. Like most apples are usually red and most tables are usually made of wood, and turn out that um, statistical models can exploit these biases in order to make educated guesses and thereby circumvent the need for true visual understanding. And so this is reduces the effectiveness of prior data sets in measuring what we are really interested in. So motivated to address these problems, we recently have released a GQA, a new data set for real-world visual reasoning and compositional question answering. Notably, in our data set, in, prior to, to, in contrast to, to prior work, everything is structured. Each image comes with a scene graph, a structural presentation of the semantic knowledge in the image in the form of a graph, which specifies the objects, attributes, and relations in the image scene, and is based on visual genome on a clean version of Visual Genome. And the questions in the data set also come with complementary structural presentations in the form of functional programs that we will see in a second that specify the series of steps needed to be performed over the same graph in order to answer the question. So let's look at an example. For this image, for instance, our data set provides a scene graph, again, based on Visual Genome, that represents the image, specifying in, the, in this case objects such as the person, table, apple, etc. And it also specifies the attributes of each object, such as their materials, colors, shapes. And finally, it provides the relations between the objects. These can be spatial relations, such as left, right, behind, or semantic relations, such as wearing or eating. Then, at the top of the slide, we can see the sort of questions that we have in the data set, and in fact, we are able to generate them automatically from the scene graphs. And in this case, the question is, um, what is the shared color of the tall person to the right of the young girl? And the answer is blue, by the way. Um, so as you can see, this question is compositional. It requires multiple steps of reasoning in order to get to the answer. You have to track, like go from one object to the next and compute different relations and attributes to find the answer. And as you can see on the right, um, we also provide with each such question a functional program that represents in a precise, um, symbolic way the series of steps that we need to perform over the graph to answer it. So in this case, we have to select the girl, make sure that it is the young girl, 
um, go to the person to the right of her, make sure he's, he's tall, go to its shirt, and retrieve its color. Um, and um, so, so this, like in this case, what you can see is that both the image and the question, they have these structured symbolic representation and representations. And um, I won't get into the details here, but what was nice is that we were able to build um, a question engine that automatically generates millions of such questions by recursively converting paths from the graph into natural language phrases. And it did so with uh, basically a recursive grammar that first it started from the graph, translated paths into the symbolic form, and then from the symbolic form, it went, went to the questions. We can see here a few more examples of questions that we were able to generate. Um, and they, as you can see, cover a variety of reasoning skills, including uh, special reasoning, uh, comparisons, logic, this can be a question about um, and, or, not, um, relational reasoning, and finally, uh, of course, compositionality and multi-step inference. So we are able to generate a variety of different question types of visual reasoning in real-world images. And the pie charts here show also the distribution of the questions based on the various types, and also the different number of reasoning steps that they require. Most steps require about two, three steps. There are also questions that require less or more. Um, and in these steps, you have to, again, traverse from one object to the next or do some sort of transitive reasoning. And remember that we provide for all of these questions both the standard natural, natural language form as well as the structured semantic form that we saw earlier. Having these structured presentations for both the questions and the images offer um, multiple advantages. One of them is the potential to reduct, reduct, reduce biases. So I'll mention this one very briefly. Um, we're introducing the paper of the, of the data set, a, a new balancing method based on, the, on sampling uh, that takes advantage of the structured presentation of each question um, to turn the conditional answer distribution to be more uniform and with heavier tails. And you can see like the, um, bef like the distributions before and after, and you can see visually that like they become more uniform, like each question type has like more uniform distribution. And um, again, I don't want to get into all of the details here about that, but the reason that we can do that is because, is because for each question, we have formal representation of its semantics. And so we can um, use them mathematically to make sure that the condi question conditional answer distributions get more balanced and more uniform. So that's one advantage of having such structural representations. Another advantage of having structural representation for images and questions is that we can use them in order to define new evaluation metrics beyond just the standard accuracy that we so commonly use for VQA. So um, one instance um, is the consistency metric uh, that checks whether a model answers semantically equivalent questions with the same answer. So it can give us some insight into whether it really understands the semantic of the questions or just cheats based, based on its language. Another metric that we can define by having these structural presentations is grounding. They tell us not just whether a model gives the right answer, but also if it looks at a relevant region in the image. And we can have such metric because each of the question has this um, structural representation that is grounded back in the scene graph. And for the, each object in the scene graph, we have the bounding boxes in the image. So we can get, we can have this whole backward path to make sure that when a model answers about some object, it really looks at that. So it gives us further insight whether the, of, for the behavior of the model. So if you would like to find more information about the GQA dataset, I invite you to visit the website. And now that we saw the data set, let's move on to the challenge. So over the last uh, three and a half months, we had uh, 52, 52 teams that participated and submitted results uh, to three tracks, development, tests, and challenge. Um, these are the baselines um, that we provide in GitHub. Um, they range between 17 and 54. Um, when you, people like on you know, GQA tasks get accuracy of 89, so initially there was a very large gap that participants <coughs> tried to reduce. And we can see all the results here, where blue bars are the um, baselines and green are the winning teams. 
uh, most of the teams improved the scores from the initial 54 to about 60%. However, the winning teams managed to achieve significantly higher scores up to the very, very impressive 73% uh, and the first place team will shortly give their talk and present their model. Just to mention a quick um, observations about the results. Uh, so ensembling is particularly useful. It can give up to 6% improvement. Um, visual features that were used by most of the people were the one that we provide from the data set. And um, one in interesting observation is that a um, third of the groups have used the question structure representations as a strong supervision that helped training the model to do the right reasoning. So I don't have much time left. But um, if, we, if we quickly look at the um, uh, accuracy uh, for different question types, we can see that most of the gains come from um, open, uh, open questions rather than binary. Like here we see um, the, top, uh, the, top, uh, like the top submissions, and we can see that most of them have pretty dis like the same binary scores, and most of the gains come from the open questions. And yeah, here we see more uh, insight into um, results based on different question types where we can see that um, most of the gain, again, comes from, in this case, relational questions and category questions, which means that um, the top models perform better on these question types. These are the question types that were the most important to improving the scores. One final quick insight uh, observation that I, I would like to mention is about consistency. So this one is quite surprising. Um, so as I mentioned, as part of the GQI, we can have multiple uh, metrics and one of them is consistency. And one thing that is very interesting that is for the top models, turns out that the higher the accuracy get, the lower the consistency they have achieved, which to me is really surprising. I'm not sure what is the reason for that, but I think this is definitely worth like further exploration because it, I mean, it's kind of counterintuitive. All right, so um, we saw the task and the results, and the only thing that is left is to announce the winners. Um, all right, so the winners. Yes. Oh, um, at the first place, we have team uh, DL61 from University of Sydney. Um, at the first place, we have Hao Tang from University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Um, the second place, we have a group called Stats Plus Mac, which achieved a very, very impressive 69 performance. Um, and in the first place, we have uh, Cacao Brain, uh, that have achieved remarkable state-of-the-art 73 performance. <laughs> yeah. Questions? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 